At first glance, the F-22's wings look like flat slabs of metal. In reality, they're among the most complex machines ever built. Wings that must lift like a hawk, hold Razor True under 9 Gs, survive lightning, and stay cool while sprinting past Mach 1 without afterburner. How do you build a wing that can do all that repeatedly? The journey starts at F-22 Wing Facility in Seattle. Pallets arrive with materials picked for one goal – low weight, high strength, and reliable heat performance. The outer wing skins and many internal parts use advanced carbon composites. The star here is Bismillahmide, often called BMI. It keeps its strength at higher temperatures, which matters when a jet spends a long time above Mach 1 without an afterburner. Dry carbon fiber preforms, shaped fiber mats ready for resin injection, arrive sealed, tagged, and tracked. Think of these as precisely shaped blankets of fiber that will later receive resin inside a closed tool. For other parts, pre-preg tapes are stored in cold rooms to protect the resin. Alongside the composites, crates hold titanium for hard load paths, hinge bores, and the side of body fittings. Aluminum alloys still play a role in zones that are cooler or where machining speed matters. Every lot is checked. Small test samples, called coupons, are pulled and tested to prove strength and quality. Composite laminates undergo non-destructive inspection. Conductivity checks confirm the lightning strike layers will work as designed. Serial numbers and paperwork follow each unit. Only when the pedigree is clean do parts move to cutting tables, freezers, and tool rooms. Stealth is not only about the wing's shape, it also comes from tight process control, smooth surfaces, and sealed joints that keep radar reflections to a minimum. Now, the raw stock becomes real parts. Composite skins start as dry fiber placed into matched metal tools. In resin transfer molding, heated resin is pushed into the fibers under pressure and then cured. The key benefit is a repeatable shape. The skins come out smooth and very close to the final form. That means fewer shims and fillers. Smooth surfaces are good for airflow and also for signature control. Inside the wing, you find a clever idea, sine wave spars. Instead of a flat web, the spar wall has a gentle wave pattern from root to tip. That shape resists buckling and carries bending loads with less weight. Many of these spars are composite pieces made by the same resin transfer process. Others use a composite web with metallic caps when loads demand it. Metallic ribs, lugs, and fittings begin as thick slabs that head into multi-axis CNC machines. Up to 80 or 90% of the metal can be removed to leave pockets, flanges, and stiffeners. Titanium parts are stress-relieved and sometimes hot isostatic pressed before the final cut. By the end of this step, you have racks of skins, spars, ribs, stringers, and hinge parts. Each is etched with part numbers, cure times, and inspection stamps. The kit is ready. Here's something to think about. The F-22's flight control hydraulics operate at a pressure higher than most commercial aircraft. Do you know the exact pressure? Is it 3,000 PSI, 4,000 PSI, or 5,000 PSI? Comment down your guesses. We'll reveal the answer near the end. The first big task is panel and stringer integration. Long hat-shaped stringers are bonded and fastened to the inside of the upper and lower skins. This lets the skins carry a load without rippling or flexing when the jet pulls high G-forces. Robotic gantries pick, place, drill, and fasten, while laser trackers watch alignment. The aim is simple. Strong joints with no extra shims and no twist. At the same time, teams construct the leading and trailing edges. The leading edge contains the flap mechanisms. The trailing edge supports the full-span flapperons that function as both flaps and ailerons. Hinge lines are sealed tightly with careful fairings to prevent radar from peeking into cavities. The lines are highly automated. Even so, observing a senior technician reveals the human skill that still matters. The feel of a perfect fit, the right amount of sealant squeezed out, and how a fastener pulls a stack into alignment. These processes often need very little manual labor. Here's a question for you. Can robots truly replace human skill in an assembly this complex? Or will we always need that human touch for the last 1% of perfection? Before parts move forward, every curve and hole pattern is checked. Coordinate measuring machines and laser scans compare the part to the digital model. If anything has drifted by a few tenths of a millimeter, it is corrected here. Small errors can grow into drag and into radar glints. Better to fix them now. Now comes the closing of the wing box, the strongest part of the structure. 
sub-assemblies arrive at a towering jig that holds everything square and true. The sequence is like choreography. The lower skin is in place, spars and ribs are added, then the upper skin is lowered on top. Portable CNC machines drill precise holes through each layer so loads are shared perfectly. Older jets relied on many small pieces stacked together. The F-22 does the opposite, using large composite panels and big titanium parts. Fewer joints mean fewer leak paths in the fuel tank and fewer surfaces that radar can catch. Fasteners are carefully chosen, titanium lock bolts for heavy loads, flush fittings for smooth surfaces. Every seam inside is sealed so the wing can double as a fuel tank, tight from day one to decades later. Thousands of holes are drilled and checked until the finished wing box stands rigid and ready for systems. Now it's the moment the wing comes alive as its systems go in. Hydraulics come first. Kevlar reinforced hoses and rigid lines rated for 4,000 psi feed the flaperons and leading edge flaps. That higher pressure means smaller, lighter actuators can move huge surfaces quickly. Next is the fuel system. Since the wing box doubles as a tank, it gets pumps, valves, and vent lines. An inerting system replaces oxygen with harmless gas, so a spark cannot cause a fire. Leak checks start with soap tests, then pressure checks, and finally full functional runs. Electrical and data wiring is woven through the ribs to power lights, sensors, and actuators. Lightning protection is added with a thin foil under the paint so current spreads safely. Every access door is sealed with sawtooth edges. Finally, technicians rig the flaps and flaperons, testing speed, symmetry, and movement until everything responds perfectly. The final stage is all about testing and sign-off. Ultrasound scans composite skins for hidden flaws. X-ray checks the metallic joints. Borescopes look inside tight cavities. Laser trackers measure every contour and compare it to the digital model. Even the weight and balance is confirmed so the wing flies true once installed. With inspections complete, the outer surface is coated for protection against weather, heat, and radar. Paperwork is reviewed so every part has a clear history. Finally, the wing is locked into a custom transport cradle and shipped to Lockheed Martin in Marietta for final assembly. Remember that hydraulics question from earlier? The Raptor runs on a 4,000 PSI hydraulic system. That higher pressure means lighter actuators can move huge control surfaces quickly, saving weight and space while still giving pilots razor-sharp responses. The F-22's wing was born from the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program. Lockheed led the design while Boeing built the wings and aft fuselage and supported avionics and training. The first production wing was delivered in 2002, and by 2006, the 100th set was underway in Seattle. From the beginning, the program leaned on digital design, matched hole drilling, and large composite parts made with resin transfer molding. This included sine wave spars and high-temperature BMI skins. When the wings arrive in Marietta, they join an airframe built for stealth, super cruise, and agility, giving the Raptor its unmatched edge. From raw fiber and titanium to a flight-ready structure, the F-22's wing is proof of precision engineering. Smooth composite skins, sine wave spars, a sealed fuel tank, 4,000 PSI hydraulics and lightning protection, all combine to create a wing that looks simple yet hides incredible complexity. It is strong, stealthy, and built to last. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit like, subscribe, and share it with someone who loves aviation. In the comments, tell us what amazed you more, the sine wave spars or the way stealth is built into every seam. The F-22 Raptor can hit speeds no other fighter in America can match. But none of that would be possible without the engine buried deep inside it. It's called the F-119. Building this engine isn't simple. It takes heat, pressure, precision, and people who know exactly what they're doing. Before this engine ever takes to the sky, it begins in fire. Not the kind from the afterburner, but from the forge. It all starts with materials that aren't just strong. They're battle-tested. Titanium is chosen for the fan blades and compressor components. Lightweight, insanely strong, and corrosion-resistant. It's what lets the front of the engine spin faster than a rifle round without tearing itself apart. Nickel-based superalloys handle the turbine's inferno, where temperatures soar beyond 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. These metals don't just survive the heat, they thrive in it, holding their shape under insane stress. 
Ceramic coatings are sprayed on like armor, forming thermal shields that deflect the inferno. And then there are the composites and high-strength steels, perfect for support housings, ducts, and fasteners, wherever weight must be cut, but strength can't be compromised. These materials arrive at Pratt & Whitney's Middletown, Connecticut plant as raw billets, forged blocks, and precision milled sheets. Each piece is inspected with microscopic precision, because even the tiniest flaw can mean catastrophic failure at 35,000 feet. If it's not perfect, it's out. What turns a chunk of metal into the core of a jet engine? Heat, pressure, and precision. After carefully selecting and inspecting the raw materials, it's time to forge them into individual components. First, massive billets of titanium and nickel alloys are loaded into industrial furnaces and heated to over 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. This extreme heat softens the metals just enough for forging, allowing them to be shaped without cracking while still maintaining their internal strength. Next comes the pressure. Hydraulic forging presses slam the red-hot metal into specific forms with up to 50,000 tons of force. Titanium fan blades are forged with perfect curves to slice air at supersonic speeds. Compressor discs and shafts are shaped for spinning at over 10,000 RPM. Turbine discs, made from nickel superalloys, are built to handle searing combustion temperatures. Each part must have an aligned internal grain, just like wood, to resist tearing under stress. That's why they're forged, not cast. For critical parts like turbine blades, the process is even more extreme. Single crystal casting. Molten metal is poured into ceramic molds and slowly cooled to grow a blade from a single metal grain. No boundaries, no failure points. After forging, parts are vacuum cooled to prevent micro cracks. Inspect it again. Only the strongest survive. These aren't just components, they're future-proofed for hypersonic airflow, afterburner fire, and gravitational stress most machines can't dream of. Here's a quick question before we move on. Both the F-22 and F-35 are cutting-edge jets, so why do they use completely different engines? Drop your guesses in the comments below, we'll reveal the answer at the end of the video. These parts aren't finished yet. Forging gives them their core structure and shape. The fine details are what comes next. After forging, each part goes to five-axis CNC machines, robotic cutters that move in every direction, shaving metal with micron-level precision. For high-performance components like blisks, a blade and disc combo milled from a single piece of titanium, there's zero room for error. No welds, no bolts, just pure unbroken strength that can spin at 10,000 RPM without flinching. Turbine blades, built to survive 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit heat, need cooling channels drilled by industrial lasers. Some of these holes are smaller than a grain of salt, but absolutely critical. Without them, the metal melts. And when regular drills give up, EDM, electrical discharge machining, takes over. It doesn't cut with a blade, it cuts with controlled sparks, literally vaporizing metal with electricity one pulse at a time. Meanwhile, robotic arms switch tools mid-process, grinding, polishing, scanning, all without human hands. Each part is checked, adjusted, checked again. The tolerances is often within 50 microns. That's thinner than a human hair. These aren't just parts. They're sculpted metal masterpieces, built to handle insane speeds, pressure, and fire for thousands of hours without missing a beat. Now that all the major components, fan blades, compressor discs, shafts, and turbine blades are shaped and finished, it's time to finally unite into something greater than the sum of their parts. Assembly begins with sub-modules built at specialized stations. Technicians first mount the fan blades into a central hub, locking them into dovetail grooves with microscopic accuracy. These blades form the massive front fan that pulls in over a ton of air every second. Next, compressor discs are stacked along a central shaft, like building a metal spine. Each disc has tiny slots where dozens of stator vanes, which stay still, and rotor blades, which spin, are precisely inserted by hand or robotic arms. Everything has to line up perfectly or the air won't compress right. Even a tiny misalignment can throw the whole engine off balance. Then comes the combustor, a ring where fuel injectors are installed and airflow paths are sealed to contain controlled explosions. Behind it, turbine stages are slotted in. These blades are mounted onto discs, 
bolted and pinned using special fixtures to ensure they won't shift under thousands of degrees and intense rotational forces. The F-119 engine core is built around a central shaft, like a spine, torqued down with precision and laser aligned to avoid even the slightest vibration. This core includes the compressor, combustor, and turbines, all perfectly balanced around that spine. And up front, there's no fancy gearbox here, unlike geared turbofan engines. The F-119 is built for raw power and instant response. It's optimized for stealth and speed, letting the F-22 Raptor cruise faster than sound without using afterburners. That's super cruise. With the core modules built and aligned, the fan, compressor, combustor, and turbines, it's time to turn this mechanical marvel into a living engine. Now come the final touches. Technicians bolt on the outer casing, attach fuel lines, hydraulic systems, oil pumps, and the FADEC, the digital brain that controls everything. After final checks, the engine is hoisted into a special test cell, a soundproof, blast-proof room designed to handle 35,000 pounds of raw thrust. Everything is double-checked. Airflow paths, fuel pressure, oil levels, and control responses. Then, ignition. The engine hums to life, low and steady at first. Then to full military power. Vibration, pressure, heat, noise. Data pours in from hundreds of sensors. Engineers watch for any sign of imbalance, fuel irregularities, temperature spikes, because if anything's off, it fails. Failure here means teardown, inspection, maybe a full rebuild. Only if it passes every trial with surgical precision is it certified for flight. That's when it leaves the test stand and heads to the Lockheed Martin assembly line in Marietta, Georgia, where the F-22 Raptor is built. There, the F-119 is carefully lowered into the Raptor's twin engine bay and locked in with surgical precision. Once installed, it's not just a machine anymore, it's the heart of a fifth-generation fighter. With testing complete and the engine now roaring to life inside a real Raptor, you'd think the story ends here. But to understand what makes the F-119 so different, we've got to rewind. But first, let's go back to where the F-119 really began. Back in the late 1980s, the U.S. Air Force launched the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, a contest to create the world's first true stealth air superiority jet. It couldn't just be fast. It had to fly high, avoid radar, and fight in any airspace, all without glowing afterburners giving it away. That meant building a whole new kind of engine, one that could supercruise, one that could hide from radar, one that could vector its thrust mid-flight. Pratt and Whitney stepped up, and the F-119 was the result. Not just powerful, but precise. Not just loud, but lean. The perfect match for the F-22 Raptor. And now you've seen the journey from raw metal to whisper-quiet stealth, from a titanium to the soul of a fifth-gen fighter. Remember the question. Both the F-22 and F-35 are cutting-edge jets, so why do they use completely different engines? It's because they were built for totally different missions. The F-22 needed stealth and speed, while the F-35 focused on sensors, range, and vertical takeoff. Two jets, two engines, two philosophies, Enjoyed this breakdown? Hit like. Which engine should we dive into next? Vote in the comments and subscribe for more.